In section 4.6, we're going to be working with related rates. In our first example, it says a hot air balloon rising straight up from a level field is tracked by a rangefinder 500 feet from the liftoff point. So we have to understand the problem. We have a balloon rising up. And notice this side is going to get longer as the balloon rises up. That's important to know for later problems that we're going to do. And we are 500 feet away from the liftoff point, and we are tracking the rate at which this balloon is rising. At the moment, the rangefinder's elevation angle is pi over 4. So we can call this theta, the angle, and so theta equals pi over 4. The angle is increasing at a rate of 0.14 radians per minute. Now that's going to be a rate, and that's uh, d theta over dt, with you know the change in theta with respect to time, and that of course suggests that we're going to be doing derivative. And they tell us that that's equal to 0.14 radians per minute. It says, how fast is the balloon rising at that moment? Well, if we call the balloon's height h, then what they want to know is what is dh dt, how fast is the variable or this side of the triangle changing? How fast is the height of the balloon changing? And that's the question mark. That's what we want to find out. Well, we need some sort of relationship in this triangle so that we can write an equation to take the derivative of. Now, of course, the Pythagorean theorem always comes into mind with right triangles, but in this case, we're working with angles, and Pythagorean theorem doesn't work with angles. So we're going to say that the tangent of theta equals h over 500. Now when we have real life rates, they're usually done with respect to time. So we're going to take the derivative of this equation with respect to time. So we're going to have to use implicit differentiation because we don't even have a t in this problem. But that doesn't mean we can't take the derivative. So we're going to have the derivative of tangent of theta, which is secant squared theta, but we're taking the derivative with respect to time, so we're going to have to multiply by the inside function in theta that there's an equation there with respect to time. We just don't know what it is. So with the chain rule, we're going to multiply by d theta dt, some function in t that theta represents that we just don't know what it is. Now we're going to take the derivative of h, h over 500. Now remember, that's 1 over 500t. So it's 1 over 500 not t, but 1 over 500 h, excuse me. Uh, so this is 1 over 500 and then dh dt. Now we fill in what we know and we solve for what we don't know. We do know that theta is pi over 4, so we have the secant squared of pi over 4. d theta dt is 0.14, so we're going to take this times 0.14, uh, and then if we multiply the 500 over, we have this right here, 500 equals all of that, and that's going to be what our dh dt is, and we're going to be in um, the height, uh, let's see, is it feet? Yeah, because we have feet per minute. So uh, let's see, the secant of pi over 4. Pi over 4, uh, we have square root of 2 over 2, square root of 2 over 2. Secant is the reciprocal of cosine. So I need, on the calculator, to find what 200, uh, 500 times 2 over square root of 2 squared is, and then times 0.14. And that'll be the dh dt, and that is 140 feet per minute. Now, I want to note, I want you to note that I was able to plug this 500 in right away for this side of the triangle because the 500 was not going to change. Here is the guy range finding it right here, and there's the point where the balloon lifted off, and those two things are not going to change. Now since this distance right here is not changing, I can plug that value in right away. In the next example, we have water runs into a conical tank at the rate of 9 feet cubed per minute. Now that's volume, so dv dt equals 9. And it's positive 9 because we are filling this tank up with water. If we are poking a hole in the bottom and emptying this, 
then that would be a negative 9. So we have 9 feet cubed per minute. The tank stands point down and has a height of 10 feet. So this height right here, the overall height is 10. So our height is 10 and a base radius of 5 feet. So here's the base radius right here and our radius overall of the entire cone is 5. And these are both feet. How fast is the water level rising? How fast? So dH dt, that's the question. How fast is it rising when the water is 6 feet deep? When h equals 6. So the overall height is 10, but we want to know how fast is the height changing when the height is 6. Now the volume of a cone is 1 3rd pi r squared h. 1 3rd pi r squared h. Now we want to get rid of one of these variables and we have information to do that when the height is 10, the overall height is 10, the radius is 5. So if we call this the radius that we're at during the problem and this is the h, then we have uh, r over h equals 5 over 10 because we have similar triangles here so the ratios should be the same. Now I want to replace r because I want to find dh dt. If I wanted to find dr dt then I'd get rid of h and work with r. So we have r equals 1 half h and so now we make that replacement so then I'm working with the equation just in one variable. So now we have the volume equals 1 third pi times 1 half h squared times h. See we plug this ratio because of similar triangles we can plug that in for that r right there. Now we're going to simplify this. Uh, 1 half squared is 1 fourth times a third is 1 twelfth and then we have pi h to the third. So that is what we're going to take the derivative of. So we have dv dt. Now remember we're taking this uh, derivative implicitly because we're uh, taking the derivative with respect to time and we don't see time or a t in this equation at all. So we have 1 fourth pi h squared dh dt. Now that we have the derivative uh, we can plug in our values. And we want to know what dh dt is when the height is 6. So really we plug in actually one value. So dv Oh, we no, excuse me, that is wrong. We have another value, the 9 over here. We know that dv dt is 9. <clears throat> so we have 9 equals 1 fourth pi times 36, and we're trying to find dh dt. Well, I can multiply by 4, that's 36, equals pi times 36, dh dt, and divide by uh, pi and 36. So we end up with pi 36, so dh dt equals 1 over pi. Now if we plug that in the calculator and get a decimal value, I have 1 divided by pi here on my calculator on my desk, and so we have 0 0.318. 0 0.318, and I need some labels for this. Now that's the rate at which the height is changing, and it's going to be feet per minute. Feet per minute. In our next example, we have a police cruiser approaching a right angle intersection from the north, is chasing a suspect in a speeding car that has turned the corner and is now moving straight east. So the police officer is heading towards the corner, but the suspect has turned the corner and headed east. Now note that the police car is going in this direction, so this side of, we're going to have a triangle here. This side is getting shorter and this one's getting longer, so the rate at which the side is changing uh, coming from the north is going to be negative. When the cruiser is 0.6 miles north of the intersection, so let's call this the cruiser, let's call this the suspect. Uh, actually, since we're going to use the hypotenuse in this one, uh, maybe we should write a P for police. So P, there's the suspect. When the cruiser is 0.6 miles north of the intersection, so we know that P equals 0.6 and the car is 8 miles to the east so the suspect is 0.8 miles to the east. The police determine with radar that the distance between them and the car 
is increasing at 20 miles per hour. So if we call this the hypotenuse side C, then DC DT equals 20 miles per hour. If the cruiser is moving at 60 miles per hour, so P equals 60 miles per hour, no, not P, but DP DT, uh, the cruiser is moving at 60 miles per hour at the instant of measurement, what is the speed of the car? So this is where we do have the Pythagorean theorem. So P squared plus S squared equals C squared. Now if we take the derivative of this, now we can't plug in any values because this car is moving, this car is moving, so both of the legs are changing, and as the cars get, uh, you know, as they, as they progress, the hypotenuse is going to change also. So all three variables are changing. That means I can't plug any values in right away. So the derivative is 2p times dp dt plus 2s ds dt equals 2c dc dt. And I made a mistake here. Uh, I even talked about it before. Uh, this side is, is getting smaller as the police uh, get to the intersection. So the mistake I made is that this needs to be a negative 60 miles per hour. Now that's going to be important when we plug values in. Note on the derivative, all, everybody has a 2, so I can divide everything by 2, and I'm not going to worry about the 2s anymore. Now we start plugging in values once I've taken the derivative. So P is 0 0.6. DP DT is negative 60. Plus the S is 0.8, uh, and DC DT, well, I don't know DS DT. They want to know how fast the suspect is going. What is the speed of the car? In other words, the suspect. And that's equal to, well, I don't know what C is, but I sure can find it, and that's going to be times 20. So we're going to have to do some Pythagorean theorem to find out what C is when these values are, let's see, P is 0.6, S is 0.8, we want to know what C is. So we have 0 0.6 squared plus 0 0.8 squared equals C squared, and so we'll have to square root both sides to find the value. Well, that equals 0 0.36 plus 0 0.64, the square root of that, and that's the square root of, this equals 1, so C ends up being 1. Now we just have to uh, get ds dt all by itself, and we got it. So ds dt equals 20 plus uh, 36. That's what 0 0.6 times negative 60 is. And then we have to divide that by 0 0.8, which is equal to 70 miles per hour. And there's the answer to the question, how fast was the car going? On the last slide, I want to talk about... Um, how questions are asked in the problems versus how you're going to answer them. If the answer to the pure math ends up being negative six feet per minute, and the question is how fast was the height falling, it is already assumed that the answer is going to be negative, so the answer that, you're going to, that AP is going to expect is six feet per minute, and that's what you would see in the back of the book if this was the question and you had an answer of negative six. Now they might ask it a little different way. They might say, how fast was the height changing? If they ask for how it's changing, it's not assumed that this is falling now. It could be either. So when you answer and when you uh, write the answer negative six feet per minute, now it's assumed that this height is changing in the negative direction, so the object would be falling. So the answer could be negative six, but you could have to answer it with a positive answer or a negative answer depending on how the question is asked.